Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Hey, welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hook Up, right here on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090. Pete Gray here with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hook Up here, right next to the San Diego Landings. It's kind of an empty San Diego Landings. Yeah. Everybody's out, he's out <laughs> blue fin tuna exactly. fishing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, we have Rosie and Jeff Flowers from Cedro Sport Fishing talking some great fishing down at a beautiful island in central Baja there, and uh, so much more to talk about here. So much fun. We're having a great time. If you want to join us this morning, we would love to hear from you. So much going on to cover our great trips to Cedro, our fishing local. If you want to be a part of the show this morning, it's 213-432-1090. Again, 213-432-1090, or send us a text via the Let's Talk Hookup app. Pete made a great point earlier. Whenever you're sending a text question through, make sure that you include your name and your contact info. It's not like a normal text message where you just uh, send it to a phone number. It's done through the app only, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't provide your contact info. So if you're the winner of the big trip, we need to make sure to be able to get a hold of you so we can get you uh, all fixed up. And speaking of big trip, man, do we have a great prize for one lucky caller today or texter, and that is a full day trip on board the San Diego out of C4 Sport Fishing. You're going to get to go fishing with Captain Matt Brawla, Captain Ryan Boston, and get in on some of that amazing fishing that those guys have been having. So a great opportunity for one of our lucky uh, callers or textures today. All right. Hey, it's time to find out what's biting out there. It is in our fishdope.com report today. It's sponsored by Gamakatsu. Check out the Gamakatsu Nautilus circle hook, including those new size twos and fours, perfect for finicky fish from that Nautilus Lite, the regular Nautilus, or the Nautilus HD. Having the ability to choose the right size circle hook is key. With Gamakatsu, you'll have that choice and the confidence that you're getting the finest hooks ever made. Stock up on Gamakatsu Nautilus circle hooks at selected tackle stores. We got our private boater buddy, Captain Mark Wish of Pacific Edge, is on the line. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, Ricky and Pete, Rosie, Jeff. Great show this morning. So uh, this April, guys, it's definitely shaping up to be one of the windiest in recent years. And this yeah. past yeah. week was not, no exception. Oh, my God, did that uh, wind machine crank up a little bit, though. But even though we've had some rugged conditions offshore to deal with, there's been some noticeable highlights for sure. So offshore, uh, even with these tough conditions, man, those bluefin just are biting. And they, they were really biting last night. A lot of guys uh, already got limits. But it's mostly catchable size fish for the most part, 25, 30, up to like 50. And then a few standouts in that 60 to 100-pound class, so you've got to have some heavy tackle around. And a high percentage of that fish is on jigs, and the high percentage of them jig fish are at night. Uh, but there is some daytime fish also, both jigs and bait. So you've got to be prepared for the whole spectrum of uh, stuff to try out there. The areas for the private boat fleet, and that's not too far down. Nice little spot of water from the upper hidden bank down towards the hidden, down towards the upper 500 there like that. If you go to the fish dope, you can easily see that break that the fish are stacked up on. They're definitely in the warmest, cleanest water. And nice little little area, not too far. So hopefully we... Uh, get that weather to straighten out a little bit still grumpy down there this morning for sure so along the coast man it's sad this uh, sector here from santa monica bay just above me a little bit down to oceanside it really took a hit from the weather water dropped from 61 62 like that down to 54 and 55 oh, <laughs> just, wow it just wrecked our local bass bite and the uh, sprinkle of big sea bass that are starting to show better for sure on some of the spots. So that's going to take a little bit to straighten out there. Now, this upcoming week here, we're supposed to get, and I say supposed, uh, we're supposed to get some better weather. And if this verifies, here is a prediction for you guys. At both San Clemente and Catalina Islands, both islands have got some squid. And both islands got worthy populations of yellows and sea bass, although there just hasn't been a whole hell of a lot caught just because the weather's been so tough. Yeah. But this upcoming week is the upswing to the dark of the moon. 
This, yeah. in my opinion, is prime time for sea bass fishing. These are the fish of the April moon. I wrote that chapter in my Catalina book. This is when I feel a lot of the sea bass uh, and yellows, but sea bass mostly move into the islands. We always had better fishing right in this time frame. So if we get that break in the weather, um, I'm feeling this next week could be epic at both islands in terms of yellows and sea bass fishing. So that's this week's report. Still got some weather to deal with, although it's getting better and uh, a lot of fish around. So it's maybe time to go fishing, guys. You heard it from I the like man it. there. Did you go fishing? Go. This is this is sea bass time right now at the island. So uh, Boy, it listen is. to the man who wrote literally wrote the book, uh, Mark Wish there. And, of course, fishdope.com. Danny and the boys will have all the information for you. And like you say, they have the temperature charts. Where to go, what to fish, how to do it. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code hookup now. Lowercase, no space. 20 bucks off using the code hookup now. And also, I want to make a note here that uh, uh, CCA California put out a uh, press release that um, said that significantly more white sea bass caught in California are hatchery fish than previously thought. I don't know that you saw this report, Mark, but the genetic. I did, I did not. No. The genetic markers caught from recovered tissue samples uh, archived showed that there was there were 700 sublegal fish captured from Newport Beach, Oceanside, and San Diego and coastal areas in the mid-1990s, and the comparative analysis found the genetic markers that 46.2% of the white sea bass caught in these areas originated in the hatchery. That's compared to 7.5% wow. wow. that have coded, 7.4% that have coded tags. So also 50 adult collected commercial fishery in, in Mexico so Cedros wow. or wherever, 30% were identified as originated in the hatchery, and they um, and none of them had coded tags. So what they're suspecting now is that somehow the coded tags aren't working as effectively as they're thought. Uh, they're shedding the coded tags. Yeah. Something's happening there. But up wow. to almost 50% of the local fish here originated from the hatchery. That's it just crazy. shows you that that program is working. working. And they've, yeah. always, they've always said, too, one of the things that I, I always remember Bill Shedd talking about was that, you know, the one thing that can't be determined is when a adult hatchery fish, you know, produces, you know, spawns and produces millions of other fish, you know, like when those ones grow up, there is no tag, there is no anything else. I mean, like, there's no way to mark how much those hatchery fish are adding to the population, right. too. I mean, there's there's no denying what a great job uh, yeah, that program is doing. It's working. Yeah, for sure. So Pretty go out and catch them, right? And, Mark, how do we find you? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, they've released, I think, well over one and a half, maybe two million of those yeah. little fish now. I mean, a lot you've got to imagine that they're helping out a bunch. That, that, that's really in for good good info there, Pete. Thanks for reading that. For sure. And, uh, yeah, we're in Huntington Beach. We're on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger. Uh, by the big Chevron station there, and the phone number at the shop is 714-840-4262. The website is PacificEdgeTackle.com, and uh, get ready for some better weather and good fishing, guys. It's coming. All right. I like it, Mark. Yeah, and let's go. Uh, you'll want to stay on with this report right now. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're going live. Captain Bill Cavanaugh is calling us from the Intrepid. Good morning, Bill. Pete and Rick, how we doing? Uh, we're doing great. We always love you, uh, hearing from you from the boat, and you're always calling with good news and a good story. Dude, last <laughs> night, holy cow. We had really good bluefin tuna fishing last night. It was amazing. The night before that, same deal. We had really good, a really good night bite. So we're on a three-day trip right now on the Intrepid. Uh, this is our last fishing day. Night number one. Bite limits of bluefin tuna, mostly 40 to 60 pounders with a few 30 pounders mixed in. We also had a, a couple fish that were pushing 70. Cool. Uh, during the day, we uh, we were spinning on school. Did get uh, mostly 80 to 90 pounders and scratched some of that better grade during the day. And then the sun went down and the fish came up. Got an epic night bite again last night. Same grade, 40 to 60 pounders. Jeez. Like like biting. Like you drop your <laughs> jig down 100 feet and it stops. You put it in gear, wind down, and you got one on. It was like that as fast as you could go until we had our daily limits. It was really something else. Oh, uh, there was a number oh, of guys that had fun. similar Those are good results on that night. Yeah, yeah. There was a, a number of guys that did things. So... Last night was a really good night for uh, most of the guys on the bluefin grounds, night bite fishing, and um, 
Yeah, um, we're just stoked. We've had great fishing. We're currently down the coast kind of looking for yellowtail and kelps just because we wanted to mix it up. we got one more night of fishing bluefin before we get in tomorrow morning. Uh, we've just had really good fishing. I wanted to call in with a report. That's fantastic. And, and is the weather starting to straighten out a little bit? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> you know what? I, you were all worried about this weather. and yeah. Yeah, I got a call from the boss, Ken Price, the, the day before the trip. He's like, what are we going to do? What are we gonna do? I'm like, what, what do you mean what are we going to do? We're going to go fishing. It's weather. It, it is. And if it gets too bad, we can always, you know, jog in it or whatever. But, uh, you know, we all get worried about the weather forecast. But real time, once we got on scene, it was never that bad. It, for, the weather that we had for two days was better than it had forecasted. We have some residual sea right now because there was a pretty good ball of energy out to the west, and we got, you know, we got some sea, but there's very little wind here today. It's decent. It's good enough. It's funny fishable, and uh, we did just we fished right through it and had really good fishing. Good. Yeah. What a well said. That's that's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. And it looks like a couple days here of, of pretty decent weather coming up yeah. here, so it'll it'll probably lay down a little bit. And if you're worried about that. Like he says, just go fishing. And I also want to say congratulations to your new office manager, Katie Schmidt. Yes. Um, such a great win for the Intrepid there. Thank you so much for saying that. I wanted to make a comment on that because we're we couldn't be more happy. She is awesome. She, you know, we had a little bit of a, a learning curve as far as the, the the transition and the switch, and it couldn't have gone more smooth. It was basically seamless. And uh, she did a great job, and we're really looking forward to, uh, you know, all the good things she's going to do in our moving forward. Yeah, Katie is perfect for that position. Perfect. Yeah, she's great. Well, hey, Captain Bill Kavanaugh from the Intrepid, sure appreciate that report. They're biting. Did you hear that? Get on a boat if you can yeah, don't, and go fishing. And don't worry about the breeze. They bite right through it. Yeah, they bite right through it, obviously. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Bill. Appreciate the report. All right, you guys are awesome. Thanks for doing such a great job. We'll talk to you later. See you, Bill. All right. Ah, that, that gets me pumped up, dude. I mean, that gets unreal. me so pumped up. Like, like, like he said, drop it 100 feet and you're on. Exactly. That's my kind of fishing, right? <laughs> I think he wrote something on the Intrepid, whatever, the Instagram or Facebook or something, that it was a quote from one of the pastors. Said, Man, I love this spot. Every time I drop it down and hit the bottom, I, I instantly catch one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Every time I hit the bottom, I got one on. <laughs> got one on. <laughs> Well, while we're waiting for our C4 Sport Fishing Report from Marcos, let's go ahead and jump into the phones, Rick. You got it. We'll do the phones, and this time we're going to talk to Dave. Dave's calling us from Anza this morning. Hi, Dave. Thanks for joining us here on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, everybody. And uh, Rosie, Jeff, just just hearing you has got me so pumped up about getting back down there again this summer. It's um, something about your trip. It's more than a fishing trip. It's just a great Baja experience. I love that flight down there along the coastline, that beautiful Baja coastline. And when you see that island come into view, it just oh. really gets you, it gets gets you excited, excited there. So, yeah. 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 My question for you, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, I'm the kind of person that always brings along more than what I need. What kind of um, supplies are you going to have down there, mainly fishing tackle supplies, are you going to have available down there that I can leave behind? That you can leave behind. You're talking about leaving some tackle behind. So you're going to bring extra. You want to bring well, extra no, uh, stuff. I don't have to take stuff. Okay. I don't have to take down with me. Yeah. Well, as far as your tackle, I mean, you know, if you if you're you know fishing seven X's and, or Taddy fourteen A's or whatever your like surface iron, if you want to you know go a little shy on them and maybe bring like eight or so, and and if you lose a few and you you need to get some more, well, you know, we definitely have a tackle shop down there. Javier's got a great tackle shop. He also has line available down there. Um, he does have some jerk baits available and that type of stuff. Um, we do try to get you down there with what you need um, as far as tackle and sabikis and and you know you don't really need a lot of even um, you know weights down there. A couple two ounce, four ounce, maybe a six ounce at the most. So you don't really even need to bring like a lot of um, weight down there. But I think shed, shedding your like packing weight and like you said, don't bring boots, don't bring extra clothing. Don't I think that's where you want to shave. And, and don't bring extra, you know, quadruples and triples of things, but don't skimp on your fishing tackle only because that's what you're going down there. Like, don't don't uh, don't rely on the fact that somebody else probably left some jigs down there, so I'll just use those. Bring, yeah. bring the bring stuff you want. Bring what you need. Yeah. Definitely bring what you need. Um, and I, I got to tell you, it's like 
I think you're going down in July, so you're going to be like, you know, doing a lot of surface iron fishing. So definitely, you know, bring your surface iron fishing gear and tackle and then um you know then the stuff that you're going to get your exotics with like we talked about the halibut and the white sea bass and stuff um and then if you want to leave something down there you're more than welcome to to leave some stuff down there maybe for the next guy that might lose a jig or two he can pick up a jig or two how often is bait available always you know, bait's always out there. I mean, we usually go out there every morning, and I would say 95% of the time, we make bait before we go out with our sabiki setups. And, you know, um, whether we use it or not, fine. Or, like, you know, Javier's trying to put bait tanks on the boats. And sometimes if you need to maybe put a little chum out there to help out, that's totally. what he's doing there, too. Yeah, so, so it's, it's uh, in the mornings, right, when you get on the boat. It used to be we'd go outside the harbor. And you would fish around the openings on either side. Now it's just they push off the dock and you go about forty feet. And it's actually in the harbor. In now. the harbor. And wow. Yeah. So what they're what they're doing is really? that they just get a a tin of uh, sardines that in tomato sauce for okay. whatever reason the mackerel like the ones in tomato sauce. No kidding. And they're you open it up and, and they just mackerel. they just kind of you know chunk it over the side of the boat and then magically the mackerel appear. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, so you want to bring a bait catcher? Yeah. Or two. Absolutely. Or three. Bring your, bring yeah, your exactly. sabikis. You know, I bring one for every day. I'm going to give you a tip. For those who use sabikis, I learned this the hard way. Use a four ounce sinker mm-hmm. because if you don't and you hook five mackerel that are you know twelve inches, you're going to ruin your sabiki. You need that weight to keep them it's straight. separated, keep them, straight. keep them straight, and it's easier to manage when it comes over the rail when you grab the sinker Great and try tip. to shake that bait off. So instead of a two, use a four use or a even four. a six or even a six. Yeah, you, yeah, you're not using the six because you need it to get down. You're using it for control. For control. Yes. And uh, I learned that the hard tip. way. And, you know, the worst thing you can do is go down there and think you need one sabique and your first drop and it's wadded up in a nest. Yeah. And you're sitting there trying to pick it apart because you want to participate in getting bait for the boat. But, um, you know, not necessarily will you always need the bait, but it's nice to have the bait. Yes. And it's and, part of the ritual. Yeah, yeah. Jeff's favorite thing is I'd rather be looking at it than for it. So yeah. go ahead and get your And if bait. you change your mind after you've completely ruined yourself and your gear on Yellowtail in the morning and you're going to go fish those halibut in the afternoon, you're going to be thankful that you made bait. Great point. Well, and you know, and when you're doing your sabiki, you know, bait fishing is like you don't need to go down that far we had one guy on our boat that kept on putting the the sabiki rig down and he'd come up with all these little tiny calico bass I was like dude just go down a few feet we have, we have two two legal halibut caught just off the dock with a sabiki and the guy first time he'd ever fished so as we're drifting he kept letting line out so he was dragging it along the bottom and and catching halibut two catching legal halibut, halibut so on a sabiki rig in the bay there you go <laughs> all right hey dave have a great trip thanks a lot for the call let's continue our catch report c4 sport fishing our man marcos is on the line right now good morning marcos good morning guys how are you doing today doing yeah. great and uh, some good bluefin fishing huh absolutely some good bluefin fishing the uh Polar supreme called in this morning on the second day of their three-day trip and they already have limits for the first two days there and Ooh. still looking around for some yellowtail for the day so very good fishing on there and that's kind of been barring a little bit of weather the last couple of days uh, it's very good fishing especially offshore the pacifica came back yesterday morning with limits of bluefin they did that actually two days or two trips in a row there they had limits there so those fish are kind of in a 20 to 60 pound range player supreme today is 40 to 60 but over the week here kind of in that you know ranging from 20 to 60 so very good bluefin fishing very catchable some bigger fish mix in there here and there the san diego is back at the island today a little tough week for them as far as the weather goes they canceled last couple days we're hoping they're back down there catching some that yelltail the half day trip Still, again, a little weather there, slowed things down, but still very good rock fishing, other bottom fishing in there. Seeing a little bit of bass, haven't really gotten those yelltail to bite. They seem on and off for the last you know, couple of weeks here. So definitely some stuff there. Check the website, c 4 landingcom we got the schedule up there for those half days, the full days, the one days and day and a half, and there's good fishing options on all of those. You can give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. You can always come down and visit us in person. We're going to be more help you out, help you out any way possible there and get you out there fishing. Awesome, Marcos. Well, great job. Appreciate that very much. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing another great report here uh, next week. Glad to hear that that fish, like we said, bit through the weather and there was still some great fishing to be had by those guys. 
Absolutely. You know, it's like like we said multiple times here, don't wait until the fishing is good because you never know what's going to pick up. Just get your gear ready and get out there when you have a chance. See if you can catch some of that fish. Right on, Marcos. Great job. Appreciate the report. We'll talk to you next week. We'll talk to you then, guys. All right. Thanks a lot for that. So. Hey, I want to remind you that catch part sponsored part by the uh, by the Fish Pros of Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Always such great deals. Uh, their Easter specials running through April while the supplies last at their Old Town location. Their famous twenty five dollar lunch bag special still available. The Wiggle Treat Pet Treats are three for twenty five bucks. Their famous rubs are three for twenty, or you can get ten for sixty. An epic deal on all those killer rubs. You can get any of their six delicious smoked cheeses for only thirty dollars plus a free lunch bag and a free pound of smoked fish, three packs of tuna jerky, um, let's see, it's uh, for 30 bucks plus a free lunch bag, and pound of smoked fish, three packs of tuna jerky, and three packs of smoked cheese, that's all for $55. What a deal. killer deal that is. You can get it all now while supplies last at Fisherman's Processing on Taylor Street in Old Town in San Diego. I was over there uh, the other day picking up a chunk of uh, bluefin tuna that my friend Steve left me, and... Uh, Sean said the sale's going great. So oh, get it great while news. supplies last and get over there and uh, take advantage of it. Hey, uh, you have a, a, a good text going on, uh, huh? Yeah, definitely, definitely. This one was from Darren from Menifee. Uh, it just says, hello, Rosie and Jeff. I'm heading down to Cedros in August. I have Shimano and Iowa jerk baits. Should I change the hooks and the rings on those, Jeff? And then also, what about snap swivels to change lures quickly? Is it better to retie direct to the lure every time? Also, do you have plastics available? Um... Uh, or should I just bring everything that I have? Can't wait for my trip of a lifetime. That was from Darren and Menifee. Wow. Well, there's a lot in that one, um, if I can remember everything he was asking. So as far as the uh, the jerk baits, yes, I fish those as well. Uh, changing out the hooks, your decision. Uh, I will tell you it's a lot easier taking uh, a fish off with a stinger hook than it is two treble hooks on a jerk bait, especially when you have two calicos on it, which happens very frequently yeah and uh it's just a little safer to handle as far as uh let's see here real quick um snap swivel snap versus, swivels uh retie you know what i i just retie. i like not having points of failure because if it wasn't for bad luck i'd have no luck at all <laughs> and uh, i like to direct tie um the little swivels or the little snap rings or the clips that they put on the front of the jerk baits uh to me uh, are hazardous to your health <laughs> because uh, you're going to go fishing. You got a little rough edge on that ring. I don't think it adds any value. The fish in, in Cedros are hungry, mean, they're aggressive. Uh, y- you don't need something else rubbing on your line. It's just make it simple, uh, make it easy on yourself. Direct tie, you're going to tie a good your knot. knot. Tie, tie a good tie knot. A good Learn knot. how to yes. tie a good Learn knot. Learn how to tie a knot. And uh, I guarantee whatever you're going to do, you're going to have fun. That's cool. There you go. How about lastly, the plastics? Bring everything you got, or can you supplement while you're down? Um, well, it comes to how much are you going to f- target fishing fish with plastics. Uh, I've been down there, and I've gone through 50 plastics in a day. And um, and that's, that's disheartening because when you run out of them and you still want to fish the yeah. fish. Yeah. Now, you know, would 100 be enough? Maybe. <laughs> you know, depending on if you're going to fish bass every day, all day while you're down there. So it's just going to depend on, on you and what your intent is. But I always go down with a bag, a variety of probably 20, 25. And, uh, a Seven inch things. Viejo. Yeah. If you can yeah. find them. <laughs> if you can find Corey. Them. I know Corey's pouring like crazy. crazy. Corey, you, you have Corey. the fisherman's land? Dude. Well, awesome. We, uh, Corey we, takes care of you. We have... Rosie and Jeff ruined one particular color of MC swim bait for us. Forever. Christmas tree. Yes. When somebody comes into the store with a giant handful of Christmas tree baits, we always ask, well, which, which, uh, which trip, what, you know, what date are you going to see your sport fishing on? How'd you know that? You know, <laughs> anyways, uh, that is such a Rosie and Jeff and Cedro sport fishing favorite that we, yes, Corey is a very good friend of ours of the shot. We have not hundreds, but thousands, thousands of that. Like we have a uh, Christmas tree in five inch Viejo, seven, seven inch, inch Viejo, weedless, Standard swim bait, Viejo swim bait. We are so loaded for Cedros this year. Yeah, we have a we, you have, got we have a ton. So my, yeah. my recommendation we have is a ton of them. Get Good. down here now and yeah. get them because <laughs> when they're gone, they're gone for a while. Yeah, uh, and I would recommend. And I know it might sound weird, but I think every tackle box should have it. Is a little tiny tube, you know, maybe a one inch long tube of. Um, 
crazy glue, gorilla glue. That's smart. Those baits get hammered and bit up, and you know sometimes they still stay together if you can glue them. It takes yep. just a second, put a Great dab call. of glue on there, and boom, it's back in business. So, but um, bring an uh, ounce and a half. Two ounce weedless heads. If you're going to fish in the boat, get you some great range. Get you down in that fish zone. You're going to have a blast. Along those same lines with your glue, one of the things that takes those baits out sometimes more than the tails getting bit off, or just the, you know, the the barb that holds the bait to the lead head that gets blown out. And you know, so every cast you make, the you always call it getting your pants pulled down. The bait ends up on the shank of the hook. A, a drop of super glue will usually extend, you know, on the on the you know basically gluing the bait to the lead head will usually yeah. extend the life a huge amount of time yes. that's a great that was a great call jeff good call bring a couple tubes with yeah you. exactly yeah. i like that gorilla glue super glue gel because it's not too runny so you won't glue your fingers together ah. as <laughs> as easy and there let me you tell go. you after putting hundreds of those yummy flyer rigs together like we have become super glue experts that stuff's the <laughs> that's bomb the stuff. it just glues the, the gorilla glue super glue gel gel yeah it just glue you know whatever that type of glue i'm no glue expert at all but it just seems to glue like the rubbery plastics you know together uh-huh. real well and it's kind of thick so it does doesn't run down on your fingers. It's good. It's good. So we use it by for, the for plastics, but not for like putting uh, um, putting uh, uh, wind ons on. Exactly. Yeah. Don't for that, for, for that. that, you want something really thin, thin and flexible and waterproof. In. That that Gorilla Glue is more thick, almost, almost like paste like. It, it, they call it a gel, and that's exactly what it is. All right. But yeah, good, good point, Pete. For sure. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into the phones, Rick. How about this time we talk to Cheer? Cheers, caught up from Cardiff this morning. Cheer, good morning. Thanks for joining us here on Let's Talk Hookup. Oh, good morning, Rick and Pete, dear friends, and uh, Rosie and Jeff. Oh, man, Rosie, I just wanted to call in. Thank you. I just wanted to call in and tell all the audience, you know, I've heard about the great fishing, and I've been there, and there is great fishing. I mean, great isn't the right term. It's off the charts. It's crazy grid. I mean, if if you're a California fisherman, which most people are, it's the best fishing possible. <laughs> the yellowtail, the calico, the halibut, it's phenomenal, right? But, you know, the thing I haven't heard from everybody is the your people down there are amazing. I mean, Richard and the crew, at the crew. they're just fantastic human beings. And if you going someplace on vacation, you want to be around a, a crew, you know, that's taking care of you that are just top-notch, loving, great people. And, Rosie, you've done it. You found them. They are phenomenal. I love going to your island. Uh, well, primarily, thank you. And, you know, they really love what they do. but primarily for them. Yeah. Oh, they're phenomenal. So I just wanted to say that, and I can't wait to get down in late August and tie into some more yeah, of those videos. you guys videos. are going to the new lunch this year. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we are do going have a great crew. Lunch. Yeah. They um, and you have you think about yeah. this. They work a split shift every day from May to November. There's no days off for them. Wow. Okay. A split shift. They get up early. They're down. Whether it's the 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 ladies making breakfast, housekeeping, cleaning your room, the dock hands are getting all of your tackle while you're having breakfast down to your ponga so that it's ready when you get there. And then, you know, during the day while you're out fishing, they take a little bit of a break. And then when you start coming back in, the ladies are back in the kitchen making your appetizers, making your dinner. The crew, the dock crew is meeting you down at the at the dock, getting all your fish up. The fillet crew is filleting. You know, the hosts, Richard or Felipe at the new uh, lodge, are there with you all the time doing anything that you, you need to have done, done. So, And that's a good point. Yeah. Once you arrive at Cedros... Uh, for Sedro Sport Fishing, you do not lift anything. No, for real. You, no. I mean, they take everything off the plane for you. When you get your tackle ready, they take it down to the boat for you. Yes. When you get off the boat, they take it back to the lodge for you. Yes. It's it's seamless. So you basically, the easy it is like the ultimate vacation. Yeah, hitting the yeah. easy button. For sure. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Hey, Cheer, nice Thanks, to hear Cheer. from you. Thanks a lot for the call. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls, more great fishing information, and more with Rosie and Jeff. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California sport fishing voice on the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. 
With gas prices going crazy, you certainly need to get the lowest price possible for your car or truck, and especially your trailer boat. That's why you need to visit Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. You're not going to just save pennies. You will save real money when you fill up at Summit Gasoline. Summit does not compromise on service. Oh, no. The great staff is attentive, friendly, and ready to help. When you pull up to the pumps, notice how clean everything is. The great sound system, and of course, the low gas and diesel prices. Walk into the Summit at Gasoline Bistro and check out the selection of frozen bait and chum, the top of the line Italian coffee, and so much more. Get discounted Everingham Live Bait Certificates, your free 100 pounds of ice with a 35 gallon minimum purchase, and stock up on snacks, beer, water, and soda for your trip. Just when you need low gas prices most, Summit Gasoline at the Sports Arena comes to the rescue. Summit Gasoline, low prices, friendly staff, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hook Up listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target. The expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. All of us at the American Angler family want to express appreciation to our regular passengers that fish with us year after year and to the new anglers that came out this last season. We realize how precious your vacation time is, and we are truly grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us. It's important that your experience is memorable from the moment you call the office to the time you step off the boat. Hi, I'm Lori. Call me at the office, 619-223-5414, or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. Come fishing with the American Angler family and make a memory. When you want to catch big bluefin tuna, you need Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. The Shimano Beastmaster is the pinnacle of electric reels. Shimano's Gigamax motor packs a winding strength up to 250 pounds, ideal for kite fishing and more. Shimano's butterfly flat fall jigs are irresistible to bluefin tuna because they stay in the strike zone longer. Shimano makes a complete line of butterfly flat fall jigs to target your favorite game fish. For all your Shimano needs, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. The giant Captain Rollo's used tackle sale is back. Join us Saturday, April 30th at Seaforth Landing for our biggest sale ever. Doors open from 11 to 3. Come early for best selection, and we will see you there. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. Phones have been so packed. One line open right this second. 213-432-1090. Have a great text here. A lot of... Uh, oh, and so we, many. Thank you for all the texts. We can't get to them all, but uh, we try and get to as many as possible. And this is just a kudos for Rosie. Uh, and it's from uh, uh, Mike and Tustin. And he says, my son, uh, Roman and I are, are going in July. Rosie is the best. Super nice. It will be our first time and can't wait. Right on. Yeah, so you got, you they're going to have a good time. Nothing better, I am What, father-son father thing? Son. Oh, are you oh. kidding me? Just ask perfect, my husband. He perfect place. It. Yes. And that's something we should note. Perfect. How old should a kid be to go to St. I have kids as young as, I think he was eight. Eight? Eight. And I was blown. He caught a fish bigger, a yellowtail bigger than he was. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But it's you know, a great family. 10, place. 11. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, your wife, your girlfriend. Um, so a common w- Whatever. Yes. And, and, and what if, I, what if, okay, I want to bring my kid down. I don't have any kids, but if I want to bring my kid down and me, I want to just, you. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can bring Ricky down. And, and, and Ricky and I just, and Ricky and I just want to fish together. Absolutely. Right? Can we get a boat for two? Yeah, the norm- you know what? Normally it's three, right? Yeah, it's normally we do three per ponga. And as uh, the years have gone on here, we have a lot of people, people that, that are just, you know, like you said, the father or son or a husband and wife or right. just two buddies, right. whatever. And so what we have done is usually when there's one group of two, 
there's another group yeah, of two right. uh, and probably another group of two. Uh-huh. So what I do is I get with those six people and we lease another Ponga through gotcha. obviously mm-hmm. Javier and Lalo. And then we split the cost of that one Ponga amongst those six people. So if you're on a five day trip, it's $200 per person for the whole five day trip to have your own Ponga. That's it. That's it. If it's a six day trip, it's 250 But it's got to coordinate with the rest of the group. Yeah, yeah we just got to coordinate with everybody. Yeah. But I have never not been able to make it happen. Yeah. I've always been able of to make it happen. Of course, you just make things yeah. happen, yeah. Rosie. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. How can you say no when you're on the other end of the phone with her? Uh, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. That it's not an All option. Right. All right, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it does. I mean, we yes, it's, it's very okay. nice to it's so, fish with your buddy. Well, this was a good text, too, uh, from Derek in Lake Elsinore. It says, when we get started on our first day of fishing and we match up with our captain in our boat, do we stay with that captain the entire week or do we rotate through? Um, for the most part, yes, you will stay with your captain the whole week. Uh, we or do three days or four days, Correct. however many days Correct. you're fishing. Yes. Yeah. Um, we do have some charters where they do rotate, um, but for the most part, you will stay with your captain. You'll get to know your captain. More importantly, your captain will get to know you. That's your what style I like too. Of fishing. Yeah, exactly. So, and also remember, this is your fishing trip. So, you know, um, let the captains know what you want to go for. You know, you might want to go for yellowtail in the morning and then go fish some halibut or calico bass in the afternoon. And they're more than happy to. That's apply. awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and jump back on the phones, Rick. Don in Woodland Hills is joining us next here on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Don. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I was listening to Cheer Talk, and I thought it was really interesting and and right on about how nice everybody is down there, how nice Rosie and Jeff are as far as coordinating everything. I just wanted to add that if you're a single and you get on a waiting list and you have a chance to go down there, don't hesitate. Rosie will do everything to set you up with a good group of people and you'll just have a blast. So don't let that ever hold you up. Right on. Yeah, we did that with Don. He was just a single going down there and hooked him up with a couple great people on a boat and it it worked out well. I want to so. get I want to get hooked up on that barbecue pitmaster trip. <laughs> you know what, guys? You can Speaking you can send which, yeah, you can right? send me on the single on that trip, no problem. You know, we have a, a Probably about five or six trips right now that I have a single spot available or a two spot available. And that two spot on Steph's trip, he just sent me a text. You guys, listen up. If there's two of you that want to go on Steph's trip, it is, you know, mid-July. It's a prime time to go. But not only that, you're going to have, he sent me a menu, Wagyu outside skirt steak, Wagyu tri-tip. I'm going to butcher this one, but it's Kuroboto pork chops, the Primo pork oh. chops, Wagyu Nor- uh, New York strip steaks, and then the last night is Chef Surprise. Oh, Chef's man. I, I, I cool. think I have to ask for a recon trip. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I might have yeah. to go on that trip yeah. with you. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, two spots. Sure. I'm down arm wrestle yeah. one of you. <laughs> <laughs> and so if somebody wants one of those spots or two, yes. both, two of those spots, they just call you, right? Just call. So like, yeah. How do we get a hold of you? Don't be shy, you guys. If it's one or two guys, I got spots for you. 619-772-7570. Give me a buzz. Um, even on the weekends. I mean, I do have my phone with me. If I can't pick up, yeah, I'll get back with you. Don't yeah. worry about That's it. And like cool. Don just said, don't be afraid of going down as a signal. Yeah, for real. Because yeah. you've matched many, many people like Don yeah. to a group. and. Yeah. Now the rest is history. It's you know, like they go. Another question, Find a new fishing buddy or just go, right? This happens so often. I, I, I get the question, well, I'm just a single guy. Do I get my own single room? It's like, well, quite honestly, no, you don't. But I may just hook you up with your new best fishing buddy. Totally. Jeff went on a trip many years ago on a long-range boat, was hooked up with a guy named Randy. Guess what? They're best fishing buddies to this yeah. day. And you that know, happens a lot on the long-range boat. Totally. Yeah, That's right. So, exactly. yeah, don't be afraid to go by exactly. yourself and either on a long range trip or go That's with That's right. Go. Yeah, for sure. Just go. Here's a, here's a question for Jeff, and this is from uh, Dane in Huntington Beach, and it says, uh, what's the most memorable fishing trip on the island, and what did you catch, and what was your tackle? Um, it was a brand new Shimano rod with a uh, Trinidad 20 on it, I believe. And um, the reason why it's so memorable is that uh, I had stumbled. We were catching <laughs> fish. My hand hit the rail. The rod went over. Don't. And uh, I jumped in, and I caught my rod. Nice. <laughs> that was the best nice. catch. Uh, Trust and, and continued to fish the rest of the afternoon. But in, in all seriousness, uh, every trip has something 
memorable that happens in it. So it brings you back. It's kind of like golf. You can have 18 or 17 crappy holes, but you get that one hole that you just remember. And the next time, that's what drives you to play again. Uh-huh. And that's what you remember. So each trip is, uh, is in itself is unique and has an experience or a story you can tell from it. So just go, have fun. And build your memory book. Yeah, and, and like you said, each trip has something special. It's like when you were down there with our son, Zach, and he was, you know, he cast or dropped down and got a white sea bass. And it was Zach's first white sea bass. And for a dad to watch his son catch his first white sea bass, image is absolutely fabulous. Next time he drops down while well, he catches a black sea bass. You know, and it's just, or like I remember one of my most memorable times. It was, you know, Javier. We were fishing with Javier. Do you keep do you keep black sea bass and just stuff? Um, you know what? You are allowed to keep them. Um, if you do keep them, we ask you to maybe keep the size that are, you know, twenty, thirty, forty pounders. If you guys catch a hundred plus pounder, that's our breed let stock down there. Go ahead and let them go. Um, All right. So but, you're talking about a trip with Javier? Ta- yeah, we were down there. I think it was Jeff, Rachel, and I were on the boat, and Javier says, you know, there was a breezer coming. And so it was like, even, and we have Javier fishing with us too. And I think I threw out my 5X mm-hmm. bird crab oh, yeah. that I love so much. And Javier and I are next to each other. We're whining, we're whining. And then you see this, this yellow tail just roll on that bait. Oh. And it's like, I'm on. And Javier is on. And I think Jeff was on. Rachel was on. It was like, all of us were just like, hey, good grade oh, of fish, 30 best. pound fish. And it was just exciting and fun. And I was like, There's, I live for that moment. Sedros has a lot of memorable yeah. moments. Yes. Yeah. I, my, one of my most memorable moments from a trip to Sedros sport fishing is uh, fishing for calicos with uh, seven inch MC VA Yeah, your favorite. Mm-hmm. And uh, right on the beach and hooking a 40 pound yellow, sight fishing to it. Oh, Seeing on. him come eat on. the bait. Yes. Yeah. 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 In the, the clear water. On the plastic. Yeah. See, isn't that crazy? Uh, and hap- it happens a yeah. lot. Yeah. Or like, like yeah. you're in the kelp down there, and it's like, you know, you're not throwing anything in the kelp. You're dropping just straight down. And all of a sudden, you look, look down, you're dropping it, and you see a, a 30, 40 pound yellowtail on the surface just going through the kelp, and you're like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Some good stuff. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's jump back in the phones. You got it. How about this time we talk to Sam? Sam's calling us from Los Angeles. Sam, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hello, hello. Shout out to Rosie. Shout out to Jeff. Shout out to Richard and all the guys over there. I love you guys. Um, every time I went to Cedros, I've always had a blast. They probably know me as the halibut king over there, catching giant halibut every time. Yeah, Sammy, Sammy's the one that's on, Sammy and, on, the, on the Facebook right now with that big halibut. And that's a serious fish, Sam. Guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, what, there's two spots open on that Steph trip. I, I I wouldn't miss it. If you guys have a chance, you know, we're, we're going with the best. He's like a professional cook. He makes the best Wagyu I've ever ate. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say you must bring a Trans 500 with a jig stick and uh, a bass rod. That's all you really need because <laughs> all day you're going to be catching yellow tail over there. That's cool. Hey, Sam, I have and, a question uh, I just for you. To say a big shout out. Who did you take last year to Cedros? Uh, I took my dad. I took him. That's right. And uh, he had the biggest blast of his life. Too. <sighs> and he's been fishing like all his life in SoCal. And uh, he's like, this place is different. You know, like it just, the fishing is unbelievable. Yellowtail fishing, which, which I really, truly enjoy to do. And like catching on surface iron, like I, I try to record it. As much as I can, I always, I always put a GoPro just so I can show my friends like this actually happens here. You know, like we nonstop catching yellowtail on surface iron. It's amazing. It's addicting. I I try to go twice a year. I love it. If I could go more, I, I'd go more. All right. Hey, great. Well, uh, thanks a lot for the call. You had a shout out. You said I just want to shout out to all the workers over there. I love those guys. They're the best, man. This is no joke. Uh, we're not lying over here. You, you go, you experience it. These guys are just super humble, super nice. I don't know. Especially it's Rosie. Total family. Uh, no yeah. Could be thank, thank you very much. Thanks a lot for the call. Thanks, Sam. I am surprised that there's any spots left, period. 
for even on the second lodge. And the only reason there are spots left is because you have a second lodge. Yeah, because we opened up 300 more. Yeah, 300 more spots. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, all the, lo- all the top long-range boats, full. Mm-hmm. All the top yeah. uh, local boats, full. Alaska's if you, full. Yeah, Alaska's full. Um, you better jump on these opportunities yeah. while yeah. you've got it. That's Absolutely. my suggestion. Because no if doubt. you want to go, call Rosie. Are you open today? I'm always open. Are you Angie? <laughs> you know, Jeff, Rosie. Jeff will tell you. He goes, it's sometimes 8 o'clock at night. If the phone rings and I hear it, I'll go look. And it's like, oh. What, hey, what's up? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> That's you cool. Right. Well, hey, I had another great text come through. It says, hi, Rosie and Jeff. What is the parking situation like on the U.S. side where we will leave our vehicle when we're at Cedros? How much is it per day? Is it safe with security? Thanks for everything. Can't wait to try this out. That's from Big Ed. Yeah, right. you know what? This is um, this is so great because the CBX, like I said, it's the frontage of an airport. So just when you go to uh, any other airport in, in, in the world, there is obviously parking there. Parking at the CBX, though, is really close. Um, it's just right across, you know, the little walkway there. They have um, four or five parking lots. Um, the CBX is getting busier. So oh, yeah. what we did last year is Jeff and I actually made reservations and, yep. and guaranteed our spot. Right Cost you an extra five bucks a day. Yeah. yeah. And it is not bad at all. And not only that, but we carpool down there. Mm-hmm. So if you are going with a friend or a couple of friends, make a reservation and everybody share in the cost. And it is definitely secure parking. We've never had an issue down there. Um, the Not only do they have you know, people that watch the parking lot, but there it's all monitored by security. Um, it's all gated off and enclosed in just like all the other parking lots at any other airport in the country. Yep. Yeah, so it's it's good. Never, I've never had any issues either. Never had an issue. Use it all the time. Yeah, because you go all the time. El Salto or per, yeah. wherever you well, guys. Next week we're going to Loretto. There, there you go. go. Right out of there. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and jump back in the phones. That right? sounds good to me. Mike and Torrance is up next here and Let's Talk Hook Up. Mike, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hey, you're welcome. Just want to say what a, a fantastic uh, time I had down at Cedros a few years ago, and can't wait to get back over there and do the, the walk across the border. Uh, that sounds like such a great deal. Thanks a lot, you guys. Take care. All Got right, it, Mike. Thanks. thanks a lot. Yeah, hey. that walk across the border is easy, guys. Easy. It is, and don't be afraid of it. Don't and, be afraid. Because Tijuana, Tijuana Airport is a great airport. It is. It, it really is really is. nice. I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting to like it better than San Diego. Oh, yeah. even, for real. To be, especially <laughs> yeah. honest with Especially you. with customs. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. we started going through there a few uh, three years ago, they were doing a lot of construction, and it was a little bit of a maze. Now you walk in. And your first thing when you see it is, wow, they've done a lot of work, and it looks it, – it, it's it's an inviting international airport, mm-hmm. well-run, kept clean. Yep. Yeah. And the people that have never been through there before, their first reaction is, is when you come out of the customs area is, wow, look at this place. Yeah, it's not that chickens was- and goats. It's Starbucks. It's Subway. It's yes. food. It's bar. It's, it's yes. shopping. They have a wine bar. Yeah. They have a club. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah they do no. a really good job. Yeah, and, and – and, uh, and it's certainly better in LAX. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, no doubt. Of course, that's not saying much, right? But, <laughs> so is the yeah. DMV. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hey, good. It's, a, it's a, 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 a nice comment from Brian in San Clemente, and he says, This message from Rosie, are the local kids fishing into fishing? My friends and I would like to bring some tackle and gear. Oh, that's cool. My wife, being a teacher for 36 years, asked me to let guys know, too, that kids can never have too many books, so very easy to bring bring down in your luggage. The only uh, issue there would be, right there. would it be in Spanish? You'd want to bring Spanish books, right? Uh, well, well they, actually, they've got an English teacher down there. Oh, they teaches do? Them okay. English, yeah. yeah. All right. And coloring I mean, books yeah, and all kinds absolutely. of stuff. Yeah, that's true. You know what, you guys? Every, almost every trip, I get a call, somebody wants to bless somebody on the island. And if you want to bring down, like Ricky said, coloring books, crowns, you want to bring down um, deflated soccer balls. Oh, yeah. soccer yeah. balls are huge. My dad but just bring, a pump, yeah. bring a pump with it. They're, they're pretty, yeah. you know, books. Yes, absolutely. Tackle gear for the kids. Absolutely. And um, just get with me. Let me know what you're bringing. And I will hook you up with Floor. She is um, the hostess with the mostest down there. And she will help you get it to the kids that can use it the most. Oh, that's cool. um, they will also, I, depending on what's going on with COVID right now, what they'll do is they will, um, if you want, they'll actually take you maybe even up to the school. They'll have classrooms come out and you can give it to the classrooms and be involved with the giving of your items, which is incredibly rewarding. That's rad. Incredibly rewarding. So, yes, please and let me know what you'd like to bring and I'll hook you up. 
All right. Hey, uh, another great tech. That was great. Uh, uh, another great. Hey, I just want to say first off, the website is fantastic, very thorough, and very easy to navigate. My question for Rosie is: Are you booking for 2023 yet? That's from Bruce and Lemon Grove. <laughs> well, Bruce and Lemon Grove, let's just talk about 2023. So. Um, I will definitely put your name on a list, but please remember, everyone that goes on a trip with us does have the first rider refusal of that trip. So trip number one comes back. Whoever signs up, signs up. I will open the trip up then for 2023 right after that. So you're not booking for 2023 yet? I am not, but... Almost like wait list I Yeah, I will I will keep your name and... and um, so call and, you up, get on a wait list, and if nobody, and tell me somebody what you doesn't want. book... Hey, I'm looking yeah. for July, I'm looking yeah. for August. So right. when uh, something becomes available, I call you and say, okay, I got, I got your three spots. These are what I can put you on. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then we'll get you dialed in. Smart, Absolutely. though, to do that now. Get on yes, your wait list is. now because you're, you know, Grab a single spot for this year and go, and then mm-hmm. by next year, you'll probably be able to find a spot to put him with his two buds to fill up the pond. Absolutely. That's yeah. cool. Absolutely. I mean, so. and both, and, and I might add, too, the, the original Sedro Sport Fishing Lodge is great. The new lodge, I haven't seen it, but the pictures look fantastic. I, I, are you going to have trouble with people saying, well, which lodge should I stay in because they're both so nice? Well, you know what's really great is um, something that's happened at the new lodge, which I've had people ask about at the existing lodge. I'm a group of three. Okay, you're a group of three, but your rooms only hold two. Mm -hmm. So one of us is odd man out. Well, at the new lodge, we have three rooms, double occupancy, and two rooms, triple Okay, that's cool. So if you're a group of three and y'all want to stay in in the same room, we're going to put you at Lodge 2. Okay. And what's really nice about both of these lodges is they both offer the same thing. You know, it's like the Lodge number two is the rooms are big, the restrooms are big, the kitchen is big, but everything has a sliding glass door that goes out onto a patio overlooking the ocean. Oh, nice. Love I it. mean, you can't go wrong. Sounds great. You can't go and, wrong. And again, I want to remind you, it's only 12 per 12 lodge. per. 12, and, so there's not that many spots available. And these lodges are run like individually, okay? So, you know, someone says, well, I want to take all 24 spots. No. It's 12 and 12, and they go down on different days. Mm -hmm. I am staggering. The trips are staggered. There's not two planes going down the Mm -hmm. same day. These trips are staggered. Usually every Monday, Wednesday, Friday through the summer, gotcha. we're going. All right. That's awesome. Hey, when we come back, we're going to find out who's going fishing on board the San Diego and a lot more. You stay tuned. More with Cedro Sport Fishing on Let's Talk Hook Up, Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hey, guys. This is Ali Husseini from Local Knowledge and BD Outdoors. I'm a lucky guy in so many ways, and one thing I'm really grateful for is my little brother, Yosef. Yosef is not only a fellow angler, but he's also an amazing realtor that specializes in helping us in the angling community find the ultimate home. If you own a home, get a free no obligation evaluation online now by typing in SoCalHomeEval.com. That's SoCalHomeEval.com. All you do is put in your address and you'll get a home value report immediately sent to your email. No pressure, no obligations, just answers. Yosef is the SoCal real estate go-to guy. He's helped me and so many of my fellow fishing buddies find what they're looking for in a home. He knows the anglers and he understands the real estate market. Not only that, but he's also a really nice guy. How many brothers can you say that about? Go to SoCalHomeEval.com and find out where you stand in the real estate market and then get with Yosef and find your ultimate home. Again, go to SoCalHomeEval.com and we'll see you on the water. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, Pinnacle Sport Fishing. Visual signs are one of our most important aspects to our charter fishing business. It's the reason myself and all of our crew all wear Costa sunglasses. With advanced polarization technology, Costa is designed to help cut through the sun's glare by providing enhanced color and comfort to help you see more fish. Costa was founded over 35 years ago by a group of fishermen wanting high performance lenses for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast style frame and lens for your pursuit. Check them out at costasunglasses.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Great 
Sports Fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outerland, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. All right, it's time to find out whether the winner is going to be from our callers or from our texters. Rosie, do us the honor. Today, the winner is a caller, uh, the caller side, and congratulations, cheer in Cardiff. You are going fishing on board the San Diego to see forth. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations. Great trip. Good times there. And Rosie and Jeff, a great show. Never two hours enough yeah. to talk about a great, great fishing destination. The fish are biting. And uh, time to go. And I just, again, I can't believe you actually have spots I this know, year. So right? get on it. If you want to go, how do we get a hold of you, Rosie? You know, the best thing really is to just give me a call, 619-772-7570. I mean, you can email me at rosie at sadrosportfishing.com, but give me a call. I'd like to talk to you. All right. Thanks, Jeff, for being here. Appreciate that very much. And uh, sadrosportfishing.com, great destination there, too, for you to find out more information. Thanks to Christian for manning the phones and the board today, and thanks to Adam for all he does on the Let's Talk Hookup app. We sure appreciate everything he does. And, of course, we appreciate everything you do. Thanks to all the callers, the texters, and the listeners. Listeners, we sure appreciate your support. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 7 and 9 a.m., right back here in the world headquarters with Captain Al Clowers. He's a bay and offshore charter captain, great guy, great fisherman, and we're going to be talking some local bay fishing and offshore fishing with Captain Clowers. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 and 9 a.m., right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and Let's Talk Hook a Bat.